Welcome to a short tutorial on setting up your Finale score. When you open up Finale, you should get the wizard that helps you set up your particular music document that we're going to use. So we type in our title. These particular two fields can be changed later. By default, it's set to letter which is the size of the paper, which we don't use in Australia. So we'll change it to A4 and we'll leave it on portrait. Click the next button. We then get a uh, setup of what instruments we're going to use in our score, which will be listed on the right hand side and the order that they will appear from the top to the bottom. I'm going to add a voice and I'm not gonna specify which voice type, just a general voice. We're also going to need a keyboard instrument. All of these keyboard instruments up the top, from piano all the way down to synth lead, have grand staves. That means they use a treble clef and a bass clef connected by a brace. If you're unfamiliar with the grand stave, you might like to try one of the lower two, which only use a single treble clef stave. Synth soundtrack looks like the easiest one to use if we go down to drums, we need to select a drum kit and the drum kit is called drum set. Perhaps to finish with, I could add maybe another synth, maybe the brass, or I could add perhaps a C instrument. A C instrument includes any of the strings, or perhaps I could use the trumpet in C. If I use a woodwind instrument, especially one that says it's in a different key, I might find this difficult, so piccolo, flute or oboe will be better to add, but for a pop music soundtrack, oboe is probably a bit too orchestral. Perhaps I might add a trumpet in C. Now for my score order. The score order is selected, but unfortunately this particular score order is not very helpful. The voice should always be at the top of your score, and the drum should always be at the bottom. For the middle instruments, the more accompanying type instruments, such as a harmony instrument, should be below a melody instrument, such as a trumpet. So now we have the correct score order. Voice, melody instrument, accompanying instrument that usually plays chords, and the percussion down the bottom. I now select the next button. Here I have options for different time signatures, different keys, and how many bars I want in my composition. These defaults are fine. Click the finish button. I now get my final score. Here you can see my four instruments and you can also see that they're all one stave each. I don't have any grand staves for my keyboard which is a treble clef and bass clef connected by a brace. I just have a single treble clef line for my synthesizer which will make it a lot easier for me to do my note entry. Perhaps some familiarization with the layout. Uh, we have our main palette here, which will give us our main tools that we select. If I hover my cursor over, it gives me the name. So this is the selection tool, and this is the simple entry tool. These two tools are the ones that we will use the most. When I use the select tool, I select a whole bar, and I can press the down cursor, if I'm holding down shift to select multiple bars or I can hit the left and right to select multiple as long as I'm holding down the shift key. I could also click and drag a number of bars that I'm interested. So perhaps I want to copy those particular bars or I might want to paste over certain cells. I also have this particular tool here which is the simple entry tool. What I want you to realise is when I select this tool, and only this tool, is a new menu appears. We now have the simple menu that appears in the top right of the menus. It will give me a list of all the things that I can do with this particular tool. For example, I could change the stem direction, and the shortcut here is the L button. And we'll have a look at that later.
You can also see a number of other things that this tool does, including some navigation commands for uh, moving around the score and some tab specific commands, which is for a tablature for a guitar, which we will, we will not be using for this particular composition. Here I have my notes, so I select my note that I want and I place it in the stave. If I enter a note that I'm not happy with, I can press the up and down arrows to find the note that I want. I can even press the left arrow to go back and then move that note up and down. Now as you can see my composition is quite tiny at the moment so I'm going to go to the view menu and zoom in 200%. And now I can see my score a lot more clearly. I'm not happy with those notes that I've entered so I'm going to press command Z until all of those notes I've entered goes back to the beginning because I don't want to use those particular notes at the moment. You'll also note I have my uh, expression markings here and dynamic markings and then I have my simple rests tool. If your simple rests tool is not available you need to go up to the window menu and select the simple entry rests palette. So by default this is not selected so you need to go down and select that to show it. Quite often this particular tool will present itself in a horizontal fashion so feel free to click and drag it to the side and change its shape so it fits the rest and fits nicely. Here we have our playback control so I can jump back to the beginning, stop and play. The repeat function doesn't work in Finale Notepad. Uh, which bar I'm using in America is called the measure and then I can change my particular tempo marking. Okay, the only thing that we need to see now is maybe something in action. So in my synthesizer, I'm going to do my C major chord and then maybe an F major in the next bar. G major in the next bar. Now you would have heard that if I try and drag this over here, it doesn't work unless I'm actually above the note. It assumes that I'm trying to add a note that's going over a bar line, which I can't do. And then I might add a, an A major, an A minor chord, sorry. Right, now I have my chord progression. I might want to copy that chord progression. So I use my uh, selection tool, and I may have missed that first note, so I'm going to try and select it again. And right up to the end of that bar line, there we go. Now Command C and Command V to paste, and now I have my chord progression twice. So I can go back to the beginning and press play. And it will repeat. Now I'm not particularly happy with that particular sound, so one thing I can change in Finale Notepad is which sound is assigned to that track. So I might go to Window, and down to Score Manager, where I get a list of all the instruments I've pre-selected. Remember, I cannot delete these, I cannot change the order. Uh, these are fixed once you have your composition made. If you make a mistake, then you can still save your composition and then open a new window, um, start a new file, get the order that you want, and then you can copy and paste from one window to the other. What I can do here is change the sound. So my synthesizer, I might want to change that from soundtrack and I can change it to grand piano. I think the same thing for my voice track, I might change that to grand piano as well instead of choir, ours. Trumpet might be nice to keep for the trumpet in C and then my general MIDI drum kit is fine here. I can now add my melody. I can add some chord tones and I can add some non-chord tones. And then I might finish with a rest. So this melody that I've written is an outline of our, my C major chord and I finished here on a C which is actually the top note in my F major chord. So I can go back to the beginning and preview my sounds. Good. Finally, if I go back to the score manager, 
I could change the volume level of my voice and the top number is 127. So my accompanying track might be uh, lower so that it's not so prominent and perhaps I could have my trumpet a little bit louder, although the tone colour of the trumpet might cut right through my composition anyway. So I'll have a listen again with my slightly increased volume for the voice. Good, and then I could continue writing a number of other melodies before I might add a trumpet melody and then my drum kit. Okay, I hope that helped. If you have any questions regarding how to use Finale Notepad 2012, uh, feel free to email me on the school email address. I look forward to your questions and good luck with setting up your score. Thank you.